Good morning. Um, I'll start first, um, and then I'll let the rest of them go and share a story. But first, I just want to thank everybody for your support, um, for all the donations you gave us for buying lots of big in the blankets and um, supplying us with cookies and goodies to eat throughout the week, for your prayers throughout the week, for prayers for no rain. Um, it was pretty amazing. We were supposed to have rain. If you looked at the map every day this week, we had rain for Monday. We took about a two-hour break. And after that, it was, I'll say, fairly dry most of the rest of the week, where we didn't have to wear ponchos and we could <laughs> get some pretty good work done. So, um, and also, again, thank you to the council for, um, and the congregation for allowing Pastor Aaron to come. It's, I think, really important for all of us to see each other in different situations and to get to know Pastor Aaron as Kathy put it, a human being, instead of, <laughs> instead of just being our pastor. So thank you very much. I guess uh, something that stands out in my mind is the first uh, three days that we worked there was with a guy named Scott. He was a full-time carpenter by trade, uh, cut his hand off in 93. In 97, uh, it was infected so bad they cut his arm off up here, and he worked circles around us with, with one arm. And he had a lot of other medical issues. Uh, most of the time he said he couldn't, he didn't have feeling in his feet and in his legs, and like I said, he worked circles around us. But his, uh, four weeks ago, nobody had been there to help yet. His problem started in 2000. 11 with heavy rain washed out his basement and so from 2011 until a month month and a half ago nothing other than what he had him and his wife had been doing was happening he said he had been praying and praying and praying for something for something four four weeks ago a group from the UP was going to go there and visit him start working on his house there was a group of 20 the morning they left, four people showed up out of the 20. And they sat around a table. He told me this story. They sat around a table and were discussing what to do because what can you do with four people? So they were sitting around the table. They had their map playing on the table, and they decided they were not going to go. They picked up their papers, picked up their coffee cups, and when they looked at the map, the coffee ring on the map circled Brookport. And that was the deciding factor that they thought God was calling them to go there. And every day when we left his house, we gave him a hug, and he, with tears in his eyes, thanked us for coming. Um, I, I just want to say I was... It was just a joy to be down there with all these people. I, I saw everybody just pitching in to help any way they could. I, I want to thank the ladies for making sure we were well fed. I think I put on five or six pounds while we were down there. Um, and the, the crew down there, too, they, this was spring break, so they had, what did they say, 170 people? Or 100, it was somewhere around 170 people over there for spring break, which normally they're dealing with 20 or 30 people on any given week working and um, the people there made sure we had lunch every day they fed us lunch and just tried to keep it things organized they were it was a little frustrating for some of them I think they had some work lined up had things organized a specific way and then the, the one guy went on vacation for a week or had something else to do for a week and he came back and found out all his plans were changed but they still found work for us to do and we all kept busy the the young ladies came along that uh, they were wondering a little bit if they would find things to do and, and they really, you know, it was fun to watch them try to, they, they pitched in wherever they could, they helped out and they kept our spirits light. Um, <laughs> uh, a lot of, lot of good energy there, singing while they were washing dishes and, and other fun things like that. So it was just a, a real joy. This we had just a real good time working and and doing a lot of good stuff. The people we were helping were real appreciative, and um, man, it was it was just really good. So. Yeah, uh, 
I can second all that and what everybody else is going to say too. It was a wonderful. But a couple things uh, that uh, maybe off from, from the normal a little bit, things that impressed me was the uh, number of different groups all coming together to, to perform major projects. Uh, we were there for uh, World Renew. Uh, a couple other groups there also were under the World Renew umbrella. But there were other groups there for, uh, from Methodist uh, disasters, a relief in uh, the uh, Southern Baptist Conference and so forth. And all of these different organizations coming together and sending groups and, and the total organization and communication between the groups uh, to get major projects done. Uh, one would start a project, the next groups would take off from where they left off, another group will come in and, and go from where we left off until a, a major uh, project is finished, like an entire house perhaps. So it's just uh, amazing. Uh, the number of people, you know, we're not the only ones out there doing this, and it all comes together, and it's really a, a, a wonderful thing. The other thing that really uh, struck me is in my uh, life, I haven't had a, a, any occasion really to uh, interface with a bunch of teenage girls. <laughs> <coughs> Uh, it, it was quite an eye-opener. It was very pleasing. It was pleasant. I, it was just a lot of fun. Uh, how open, how, how just totally uh, uh, let your hair down, open spirit. I mean, it, it, it's just amazing. You know, we, work is work, fine. You come back during a, at the end of the day. And I mean, yeah, uh, the decibel level just uh, over a game was just uh, <laughs> enough to bring the roof down. Uh, and you see a couple girls, uh, boys don't hug like that, girls hug themselves all the time. But uh, a couple girls hugging themselves, coming down through the room, kicking their, their feet up in perfect unison, and singing a song to the top of their lungs that I never heard before. <laughs> so, but so <laughs> it was, uh, it was a really a eye opener, and it was really, really pleasant. I mean, we just, everybody was uh, really uh, enjoying themselves, I think. And, uh, it was, uh, like I said, <laughs> it, was, it was wonderful just to be there. Um, this is my first ever surf trip also, and um, I had a lot of fun. It was great getting to know everybody better. But the thing that stood out to me was how patient our guys were in teaching these girls <laughs> what they had to do. It would have been so much easier and faster for them to do it themselves. But they took the time and taught them how to hold a hammer, how to nail nails and siding and stuff, and I thought that was cool. Branching off Mama Carla here, a lot of us high schoolers and others too, there wasn't quite enough work for all of us to be doing something the whole time. So a lot of times standing there, we just felt useless because we couldn't do anything. But they said later from the people we worked for that it wasn't just doing the work, it was being there, wanting to help. And that was a lot of help for us who couldn't do anything a lot of times. Hold on, Pastor. <laughs> <clears throat> I have a list. <laughs> the things I've learned on spring break 2014, or 15. <laughs> One, never lean against a heater. <laughs> Two, when I'm using a hammer, I'm like lightning. I never hit the same place twice, and when I do, it's usually my thumb. <laughs> Three, it doesn't matter when we pray, how we pray, or where we pray, just never give up. Four, Grandpa Dog has the best stories. Five, the fried chicken is better than anything you can get at Family Fair or KFC. Six, Gary has a lot of nicknames. <laughs> Seven, we can clear out at IHOP. Eight, never take things the wrong way. <laughs> Nine, never sleep in when Gary's around. And ten, you can jam out to Bohemian Rhapsody at 5.30 in the morning. The um, never sleep in when Gary's around. The second to last day, was it? Gary decided it would be a fun idea to drag me and Sammy on our air mattresses all the way out of our room into, like, the dining room by our feet. <laughs> that was... It wasn't. I didn't do anything to Gary. I don't know why he has it out for me. Branching off of that, Kennedy, 
I saw Kennedy getting dragged and I was laughing along just like, oh, she's getting dragged. And then I saw him walking towards me and I was like, I'm up already, I'm up already, don't touch me. But it didn't work, he dragged me anyway. And on a more serious note, um, I saw something really cool like with the people we worked for weren't just sitting around just watching us work. They were out there helping us and they were really grateful that we came and I thought that was really cool. <laughs> this week was really fun and I definitely got to uh, get to know a lot of people really well, especially Mike Kaler. <laughs> we had kind of had this ongoing feud. Uh, <laughs> accidentally I kicked him in the face. Almost broke his kneecap. Um, but it was just fun because we'd get in arguments and we'd hash it out and then like 20 minutes later we'd be like, all right, it's time to hug it out. And it was just really great. And uh, there was just a lot of pranking going on. Uh, it was just really fun. I almost nailed Gary in the eye. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I really am a safe builder. It's just accidents happen. But... um. It was just a really fun trip. It wasn't just, uh, we got to get work done. I mean, we did get a lot of work done, but we also just had fun. And one of the guys there, his name was Eddie, that was one of his main points. He's like, this is a, a trip to help people, yes, and to get stuff done. But remember, have fun, because you get to experience this, and you get to work with people, and it's just all about you know, enjoying yourself and helping others enjoy themselves. I think um, what impressed me the most were the people that we worked for, and um, there was one lady that we didn't actually work on her house, but um, she was in the in the serving line for at lunchtime, and she was there every day serving us. And her name was Lucille, and she invited us to her home because she had just recently moved into her new home. Her home was taken by the tornado. And um, she was so excited to show us and to, she was so appreciative of all the people that have come over the years to help. And so um, she wanted to really give back and she was serving every day and she was just a, a really um, enthusiastic lady. We just, we just loved her. So she showed us her, her new home and she was excited and it made me excited for everybody else. But the people that we, we worked on their homes too. They were just so appreciative and they were, they were just doing all they could to help too. I'm gonna make mine really quick, but um, one thing that did really stand out to me is when we got to Scott's on Monday morning, he wouldn't let anybody start anything until we had a word of prayer all together. And then on Wednesday morning, part of the group went to Michael's house to do siding and he, walked away from us for a few minutes and then he came back out and he said, I'm sorry ladies, I just had to go back in the house and have a few minutes to compose myself. He said, pray and cry. He said, I helped a lot of people, but it never seems to completely come back around to me. And so he was a little overwhelmed that we were there and so he had to go in the house and, and pray and cry and he apologized for it. So they are really, truly appreciative of everything we do. Uh, two, quick, two quick things. I think you make a trip like this because um, you're, you're stepping out a little bit in faith, but it is really a, a faith builder to see how uh, Christians work together and come together and have a spirit of goodwill. And the other thing, more and more I think I'm learning that life is not about what you get or even what you do. We're so big on, on what we do and, and how competent somebody is at something, but it's about relationships. And um, boy, we sure built relationships this week with the people in that community with each other. You never, you never heard more laughing than we had going almost every night and just a, a great time for, for no reason at all when you wouldn't expect it. So that was a real blessing to me. Well, pretty much everybody took everything I was going to say. Um, the people that we helped were incredibly appreciative and that was really eye-opening. Um, the, these are macho guys who you would not think of as getting emotional, but both of the homeowners that we spent a good deal of time on, they, they were tearing up, not just once, but at least a few times, that we would just come there to help them out. And it kind of reminded me that 90% of 
helping somebody or just showing love to somebody is being there and saying, hey, I'm here to help you. And, uh, and that, was, that was just a good reminder. And uh, it made the service a whole lot more worthwhile. So thank you for your support, your prayers, your thoughts. And uh, we're glad that we were able to go. And uh, we're grateful that you made it possible. So thank you very much.